When people say to me, would you rather be thought of as a funny man or a great boss? My answer is always the same. To me, they're not mutually exclusive. There's weight of intellect behind my comedy, yeah? If you were to ask me name three geniuses, I probably wouldn't say Einstein, Newton, you know. I'd go Milligan, please, Everett, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah finally, <laughs> <isn't it>? right. <laughs> Excellent work, Danny. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of Wern and Blog, a UK office podcast. A podcast dedicated to breaking down and discussing each episode of The Office. My name's James, and with me we've got George Michael's latest release, Danny. Oh. Jack. He's not just a podcaster, but he's a bloody big bloke, isn't he, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> and seedy little man with seedy little jokes, Seth. Cost of living out here is so cheap. <laughs> oh, yeah. We should probably explain, by the way. Seth's not actually yeah, with on. us today. Seth's in Spain. He lives in Spain. He's an expat. And he's basically joining us via satellite for this episode, as he will do for most of the episodes. Yeah, yeah I love them. I try and record some on my back, but I'm not paying any rent out here. Thanks for the expense. Afford to live on a pittance. My situation is nearly as good as it was in Watford. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope you all enjoyed our last episode when we discussed the pilot, the very first episode. Um, touched on lots of bits and pieces there about where The Office came from, how it evolved from some of the early pilots. And today we're going to talk about the second episode in the series, which is work experience. And this is really the next stage in getting to know Brent, where we start to see a bit more of the other characters and a bit more of Brent's relationship with Jennifer and how he, I suppose, manages his conflict within him about whether to be everybody's friend or whether to be the boss. I have to say, this episode is one of my favourites, guys. I don't know about you. I think it certainly marks a, a step up in quality from the first episode. I think there's a, a great bit, a deal of character development. I think we get to know Brent a lot better in this episode, what makes him tick, you know, his, his dynamics, how, just what lengths he'll go to to save face. Yeah, I feel exactly the same. I hadn't really thought about it before, but it was only watching the back the episodes for this podcast and really thinking about it. But yeah, this, this second episode is really where it hits its stride. And it really made Gervais and Merchant really start to kind of put in the, the things that they... That, that the show grows up to be like the first episode was really kind of a uh, a testing ground I think really mm. and you don't really think about it unless yeah unless you watch it back with that hat on but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say this is the episode where I really started to love The Office like I was intrigued by the first one but this is when I fell in love with it was watching this episode mm. yeah exactly yeah and like yeah. like Seth yeah. says you really find out the real dynamics and the and the Brent really becomes the character that we all know now and the whole mm. the whole country the whole world knows. He becomes that in this episode, but he wasn't so much in the first one. I think the first episode was obviously the introduction. It brought you in to meet all of the characters for the first time. So there's only so much, so so many places they can go with that. Yeah. Whereas this one, mm. so it kind of sets out the stall as the the awkward humour. Do you know what I mean? That definitely, moment. Definitely. I mean, I can't yeah, yeah, yeah. think of a, another show before this that, that absolutely hit home such an awkward moment as, as the end of this episode. I mean, it's absolutely <laughs> yeah. cringe. -worthy. It truly is. Yeah. It defines the genre of cringe humour. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's a few bits in this that, 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 that really kind of set up that people remember when they think when they think of Office is the, the classic cringe comedy mm. this, it really goes back to this episode and the things that happen in, in this episode it was so present in extras as well when they were, you know every episode had that awkward moment with Maggie usually setting it up yeah, yeah, whereas yeah, this yeah. was kind of the first time I really saw something so awkward that I would turn away from the screen or I, I almost yeah. really couldn't watch it sometimes and actually I think that's why some people maybe don't enjoy The Office as much because they just find this too uncomfortable to watch. They can see it's funny, but they just it's just too much. My ex-girlfriend could not watch The Office. She'd watch one scene and go, no, no, turn it off, turn yeah. it off. It really hit something inside her, like a, a shame part of her. That she well, just couldn't handle it. She couldn't... It's funny that Seth's ex-girlfriend had a lot of shame to deal with. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm someone that suffers from social anxiety and shame, and personally, I find it's like yeah. immersion therapy watching The Office. Because <laughs> I'm just yeah. like... I'm just like Thank goodness it's, it's not like just me. Your worst fears, right? It's not just me, and, and you know I'm safely sat here watching the telly, and it's not actually happening to me, so I can laugh at it. And yeah. when something mm. cringe happens to me in real life. I just think, well, at least I'm not David Brent. And if I am David Brent, I think, well, at least I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd rather be dead. 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 I'd rather be d
It's just endless quotes, isn't it? It's unbelievable. <laughs> the thing is, we said in the last episode, I think, that it makes you purposely act awkward and appreciate awkward moments in real life. Mm. And these episodes, that's all, that's, I don't know, I mean, this sets that up completely. So yeah, absolutely. Love yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoyed watching this in the context of seeing the first episode and then seeing this one. And yes. just, as I said earlier, the step up in quality. And it, it really hit me that this is a much more developed piece, you know, as a second Which piece. So down... I think it's a really important episode. I think yeah. the way it, it puts Brent across and shows you those lengths he's willing to go to, shows you he's willing to be cast himself as a pseudo-feminist, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. To, yeah, it's absurd and it's brilliant, you know, so yeah. Which isn't to put down the first episode, but I mean, you know, there's always growing pains of things like this. And it does follow a yeah. similar pattern to the first episode in the sense that the narrative is, hangs off of somebody being introduced to the rest of the office. Exactly, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know whether that's just to get you into the characters more and it's a good excuse. And it ends with someone being threatened to be fired by Brent. He then has to walk back. That's true. Yeah, I thought, I, I thought about that. I, was, I, was, I, was, I, couldn't, I can't remember how the next one ends, but I was kind of hoping, oh, I hope it ends with Gary. It's like a thread that we haven't even noticed. Yeah, 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 but I know it doesn't. Anyway. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> we might as well. Right, you you, you got on with it, yeah. Right. All right, so I mean, let's just jump straight into it then, I guess. So the first uh, uh, scene opens on David Brent giving a tour to uh, Donna, so yeah. a young lady, a friend of his um, daughter, showing them around the office. Showing off some of the free stuff that he's got. <laughs> yeah, and so like and like you said, yeah, this kind of just um, reintroduces us to the office as a whole and Brent. Like it allows him to kind of to walk us through the the yeah. scene, the world of the office. Yeah. And once again, he's trying to be funny, but it all goes wrong because yeah, the answer phone yeah. falls in the bin. Oh, that's it's... such great physical comedy. But you got to remember, that Gervais yeah. wasn't an actor. He's not. A, when he started the office, he wasn't an actor. He was the producer at XFM. He'd obviously had a little bit of air time on the 11 o'clock show and on Meet Ricky Gervais as a comedian. But actually, as an actor, he had no formal training. He'd never done it before. So to be able to pull off this kind of performance, and you and I mean, yeah, maybe it's the only kind of performance, a good kind of performance he'll ever be able to do. Basically playing but, himself. Yeah, okay, <laughs> maybe. But if you can do that kind I don't of know performance... About that. If you, if, wow. if, you can, yeah. if you can pull off that kind of performance, then I think he deserves all the accolades that came to him. Because yeah, that is just, well, yes. if, if you've only got one classic performance in you, then that's, that's, good, that's good enough. And he, he had and that this one is classic Don't forget, this isn't just... And that is show. an absolute timeless, one of the best comedy performances. Exactly, yeah. That, so if you've, got, that if, you, classic. if you've got that within you, <laughs> which he did, oh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter how many international correspondents... Invention of lies. Invention oh, of lies. Yeah, ghost, ghost town. Oh, ghost like him off. What have you done? Nothing. <laughs> so don't, no, no, but... <laughs> I, 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 you know what I'm going to say? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes an amateur will stitch up a professional. Whenever I have to defend him from people saying well. he's not a good actor, I just... I, what I, always, I want to just pull up that scene of him trying yeah. to throw, pretending to throw the answer phone out of the window. It's such mm. brilliant physical comedy. And it doesn't mm. look... It, it looks completely natural. It doesn't look like... Oh, it, you know, it's so it looks real, yeah. yeah. It's Absolutely not even brilliant. slapstick. It's too natural for Yeah, slapstick. yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, like, yeah. yeah. You can yeah. imagine how brilliant. awkward it would be if you're Donna in there. And it's her first day. She's just being introduced to this boss. What must she think of him? <laughs> well, I want to talk about Donna, right? I mean, we can get in, maybe we can get into this later on in the episode. But what do you guys think? About Donna, I I would say she's really stuck up in this episode. I don't know if that's how. I don't, she's got, what do they call it? Resting, resting bitch, bitch face. face, but not just resting yeah, bitch face. Resting. She does, she doesn't even crack a <laughs> smile when De when Brett's trying to be friendly to her. And it's, it's in this first yeah. in this first scene, and you could say, oh, it's because she kind of knows Brent, so she kind of maybe well, knows exactly. What she knows him. He's a family friend, don't forget. So this is someone yeah. who's seen Brent in his real life. She's seen him probably at Christmas. She's yeah, seen him probably you, at family if you were, barbecues. If you meet up with a family, a, a, a friend of your dad's, right, who you don't even really like that much necessarily, you would still kind of give a little bit. You'd, you'd crack a smile. You'd, oh, you'd at least be, you'd be more generous than she is. It's almost like she's giving us a clue to what Brent's actually like. I guess Do you know what so, I mean? Maybe, maybe this but, is... I mean, I mean, I will say it's a good character reference for Brent. Is it not that he knows these people yeah. and they Ron and let him say, yeah, Ron and Elaine. Let him with, with, with good standing into stuff. So yeah, he's a policeman. You know, he's, he's a big, big, big brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, he'll, and he'll yeah, trust yeah. him with the, you know his most. They important trust him possession. with their most valued possession. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so he's obviously, you know, what I mean, he's obviously a stand-up guy. He's not some like weird little creep. That's yeah. what this episode tells you. He's a stand-up. Well, so, he's basically a stand-up guy. So you know, he can yeah. just outside the office certainly. So why is Donna acting yeah. such, like such a stuck-up bitch to him? Because she's a sulky teenager. Yeah, she's sulky. Cause exactly. Yeah, because she's just she doesn't really want the job. Maybe she's done it to show her dad up. And she's straight away awkward with Gareth as well. Like pretty much. She's quite horrible to him actually. I'll give you that. She's, That's what she's I mean. Kind of, she's just 
Yeah, but Gareth's a lech. Anyway, you know, I know, he's but, obviously yeah, but it's, like it's, her, it's her first day. And is she a new? Is it? A, a... I can imagine if there was like a, a dynamic with them two at school. Donna would be like the bully, and Gareth would be like the kid who got picked yeah. up. Yeah, but they're not at school. There, she's twenty, and she's on her first day yeah, of the exactly, job. And straight yeah, yeah. away, she's just. I, yeah, I feel like it, I have to come to Donna's job, defense a little bit. Yeah. I feel like I have to come to Donna's defense a little bit. What's the case for Donna? Right. What about when she integrates with Tim and Ricky, and they're having a laugh, doing the Michael Jackson stuff? She's really relaxed with them, having a good good time. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, there, there is evidence to the contrary. Yeah, when she identifies who's the cool people. All it is is that she's got her Brent's number, yeah. and basically she's got Gareth's number as well. But it's her first day in the office in what's presumably supposed to be a new job, and she's not a temp, is she? she this is going to be her first, this is going to be a job until she ends up quitting mm. in, in episode six. And just because she's, yeah. she's hung out with Tim and Ricky for a bit, and she's seen how Tim acts with him, she acts that way towards him. I think, I'm with, I've, I mean, I feel kind of sorry for Gareth there. You need to, you need to earn being cocky to one of your... But this is her first day. Fine, she knows Brent. And she, fine, she may think, oh, this Gareth's an arsehole. But she hasn't even been there for eight hours yet. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, She's already acting like that. All right, well, let, we'll, we'll come on to maybe some other things that we don't like about Donna or we do like as yeah. the show goes Well, on. we can also come on to what the rest of the office like about Donna. Because well, oh. we have that staff meeting scene. Oh, yes, yeah, that's fact, true. Yeah, yeah, in that, fact, that's the next scene, actually, is, where David is once again trying to reassure his team that there's not going to be any redundancies at this branch. Jennifer has told him that the most efficient branch will absorb the other. Cogito ergo sum. We'll be all right. <laughs> so straight away, we're, we're remind, they're reminding the audience of the through line, yep. the, the subtle through line of the first series, which is the uh, redundancies and the downsizing. But, I mean, the people must know that there's a chance, even if they are the most efficient branch and they absorb the other, some people are still going to get made redundant. They must know yeah. that. So this is funny because, I mean, when I first saw this, Ben, I was thinking... Cogito ergo sum. Does Brent know what that means? Because technically that kind of yeah. makes sense. I do know. I looked it up, but I think it might be one of Danny's questions. Yeah, it does. It means I think therefore I am. This is almost a, a point of philosophical Brent, but ultimately he's saying if we think we're the most efficient branch, then we are the most efficient branch. Therefore we are. But I, but I think yeah, he just thinks it point. sounds no, good. He did, yeah, he doesn't know what it means. He's, he's, he's just saying, no, he's just he's throwing just, it out there. He means to say thus, doesn't he? But he just throws yeah. out cogito ergo sum, which is just some stupid thing he's heard. Vis a vis. He does it all the time, just using Latin randomly to try and, you know, <laughs> you try and give me yeah, yeah. Anyway, he I'm goes on credit for that. to sort of explain that to the team, and then there's a wonderful, wonderful talking head here, which is about the powers that be. If they come interfering, they'll say, "Oh, who's this running this branch?" This isn't in the rule book. Who's in charge here? Guilty. Get a new rule book. All right. That's I've the quoted this in job interviews. <laughs> when people ask me about my working style, I say, "Having a laugh while getting the job done," and I've what? got the job as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah. This, also, watching it back, that really more than the first episode, sets up what this what the character of Brent is and mm. what the, what everyone knows mm. him now as, which is this guy who's, he's a boss, he wants to be a good boss, but he mainly just wants to be liked and he wants to be a comedian. He thinks he's a great comedian. He honestly sees himself up there with Milligan, Cleese, Everett <laughs> and Sessions. <laughs> and throughout this episode, uh, Brent is kind of really bringing up this idea of him wanting to be funny. Like when they're down in the warehouse, yeah. he, he says that, uh, Probably the humour. That's what. That's a part of the body. He that's a good is. question. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful, probably wonderful, the humour. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, the part what? of the body he thinks is. No, that's <laughs> what every, every senior manager wants to hear from the person running an office <laughs> on their behalf. <laughs> What's he say? He's a, the, the, where, no, the, the office is the brains. So the office is the uh, so the office staff is the mouth. The warehouse are the hands, setting him up for the inevitable challenge from his boss. Mm, and which part are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any fluffs the good question. Probably no. Humor. Which, to be fair, is quite witty. Yeah, oh, I'd have laughed. Oh, yeah, but he's, she's not there to laugh. Man. <laughs> yeah, she, I think she's, she's had enough. This is a thread that runs through this whole episode, and it's almost a, a plot hole for me. How somebody be, can be so oblivious to their genuine issues that are going on in their office, and his job's on the line here. Let's not forget, he knows that he might lose his job, <laughs> and yet he can't help himself. So yeah, we will probably we, come yeah, we'll, that. we'll get back to that later. Oh, no, yeah. Well, that's that's that. Like, well, it comes back to he's having a laugh with the sword of Democles hanging over him. <laughs> you know, kill we get a new rule. So book. straight away in this episode, yeah, we've got the uh, the redundancies brought back up again, yep. and we've been we've established now for once and for all, for definite, it's cemented on now the character of David Brent, Absolutely. who is this awkward, cringy guy, but not because he's trying to you know pulling nasty pranks and jokes like trying to fire people, because he's trying to make people laugh, like trying to pretend to throw the answer machine out of the window. He wants and he wants to be yeah he wants to be up there he wants to be seen as the John Cleese of the office exactly yeah Basil, well, comedy at all costs yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah well a mixture of John Cleese and Ian Botham you know <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be seen as a maverick and a comedian you know like a renegade a tearaway you know one of these sort of unorthodox flash bosses who really has some like new 
management style. You know, he says that at one point. It's a new management style, team individuality. You know? <laughs> Not in this episode, I don't think. But that's no. a good example of how he wants to be like the renegade. You know, the motivational. But only up to a certain guy. point. Yeah. Only up to a certain point, though, because when someone in the office makes a lewd joke about. Well, when, when we'll the third back. person makes a lewd joke about Donna. Well, that's it, exactly. So in this meeting when he's talking about the redundancies, this is when he introduces Donna to the rest of the team. Yeah. And this is when he's first faced, I suppose, with sexism in the episode. And and the someone pipes... Who can remember the first thing someone pipes up with? Well, I handed some swollen goods. And then someone says, I've got something you could take down in evidence. <laughs> Which, yeah. And, and then, everyone's so laughing. He, he, everyone's laughing. Everyone's getting worse and worse. And he's getting more and more annoyed. And then he finally... No, but he's not. No, he's not. He's not he's he loves not. it. He's loving it. I he don't think he is annoyed at first. No, he's no, not. No, no, no. You might not see it, but in his head, he's getting annoyed. No, see, I think this is... How do you know if it's in his head? <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it. The cameras I'm can't David, see I'm it. David Brent, remember? The viewers <laughs> can't see it. The cameras can't see it, but in his head. Yeah. So I think what's happening in this episode is he hears the first comment, he thinks it's funny. He hears the second comment, he thinks it's funny. He looks up, maybe recognises, oh shit, the cameras are here. Yeah, the that's, right. that's what it is. That's do you know what, what I mean? He, I've got to respond to the sexism. So it's like this snap judge... <laughs> So and this another thing, out, yeah. You know, he's, like, yeah. No, and he's ultimately he's he's hyper aware of the cameras in this episode. Yeah. And, and in all fairness, yeah. that guy that the disappearing up her tunnel, he sort of takes it up to a new level, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but does he? I don't think it's not that much. That not, is a more graphic representation. Of, yeah. But not yeah. enough. Not, not enough worse. But Brent can put a stop to the whole thing and say, get yeah, out. it's still a massive <laughs> leap. In general, I think I think this ages the show. The fact that. You know, introduces a hot girl to the office, and the men are so ready to basically just start leaving. Well, I was thinking this. I was wondering. Yeah, if it, yeah. wouldn't, it wouldn't happen now. I was wondering. It, it, it struck me as a bit too uh, over the top and unrealistic. That, yeah. and then I was thinking, but Even then, for them. but put myself back in two thousand one. Would I have thought that then? Maybe not. Maybe. Well, I don't know. I think I, I worked in a place in about two thousand three, two thousand four. And the sexism was incredibly rife, and it's that institutionalised sexism, right? People get away with it for a long, long time, and it just becomes part of what people do, and people feel afraid to speak out about it. I don't know if that's, also, I don't know if that's epidemic in Worm and, Worm and Hog or not, but I've never seen an HR department within Worm and Hog. Is there an <laughs> HR department? And I also think I don't think Brent is outwardly sexist. No. I, I think Garrett's a bit of a perv. I think I don't think Brent's a perv, but I think Garrett's actually a bit of a deviant. <laughs> Genuinely, he's, like, he's got that deviant look about it. No, he's time. all right. I think Gareth, Gareth's uh, ultimately redeemable. Look he's, at the he's not a finch. Yeah, he's certainly look redeemable. Look at the eyes. Yeah. What if she's up for it? It's a little bit creepy. Each hand, yeah. yeah. He goes to shake a hand yeah, yeah. and he puts both hands on it and he's like, welcome. Welcome. Yeah, but I think he's a, he is creepy. He's just trying to be suave, though. I don't think he's a perv. He's just a, this is that's him thinking that he's being suave. I'm sure he's a perv. And it, but what's funny about that is that each each handshake sets up the different characters. I mean, it doesn't yeah, not, yeah. it doesn't really matter so much with Ricky because he's he's not a, he's not there for the long haul. But Gareth gives that creepy kind of like puts one hand over her palm to like lock her in, like yeah. thinking he's being suave. Ricky gives her like a long extended handshake. Yeah. And then Tim doesn't bother giving a handshake. It's just like a, a hand up, that like, hello kind yeah. of thing. So we know. So we kind of get the what he's like as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can tell there's definitely going to be something going on with Ricky and Do and, and Donna. Yeah, that's it. And that away. comes yeah, up yeah. later on, which is obviously brilliant. Well, they're the only two young people, really, in the office. I mean, Tim and Dawn aren't exactly youngsters. Are they? They're not 20. They're in like their 30. Th are they in their 30s? Yeah. No, 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 it's not. Tim's not 30 Late, yet. Tim, Tim and Dawn's nearly, younger. Tim's nearly 30. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Dawn's... I, I get the impression Dawn's a couple of years younger. Ricky and... Uh, well, he's about 21, 22, yeah. so he's just graduated. Exactly, yeah. the first. So, yeah. <laughs> and Donna's like 19 so yeah they're, they're, yeah, so yeah. That's always, they're, they're about the same age they're both yeah. let's say around 20 and they're the only kind of young so they're the most natural fit yeah and they're the only young people in the office so when when Ricky and Donna are first sort of showing signs that they're, there's a bit of flirtation going on between them and the chances are they're going to get together you know Brent is very prudish about this he's very funny about it and you, it could be because he's overprotective and you know he's the daughter of a mate and he's been trusted with that but it could be, I, I feel it's because he's very, very insecure. It's a world of insecurity. Anything sexual brings up this insecurity in Brent. He becomes quite defensive and a, a little bit prudish. Is this, your, is this where the episode takes a philosophical bent? Or a philosophical Brent. A or philosophical or Brent. Because he's, also, he's, he's often quite uncomfortable around sexual stuff, like more so than Gareth. You know, he makes a right tit out of himself when they go to Chasers. All that kind of stuff indicates to me that he's very insecure about sexuality. He, he gets very awkward. He gets a bit defensive, you know, with that woman who, Trudy, later on, you know, I've let myself go. You're an embarrassment, love. It's very defensive and kind of like, if he sees sexuality if, between two people, you can see him get very insecure. I think that, it's more you know? that if he sees sexuality from a woman, if he get, if he, if he kind of sees any kind of um, 
uh, autonomy or like, sexual autonomy from a woman, he, mm-hmm. yeah, he that gets not not gets his back up. That makes him feel awkward. Like he's not really sure what to do about that. He's I mean, he, like we said in the last episode, he's a bit sexist. He's a bit of like a he's he's still stuck in like the kind of the old days really psychologically. And I think he thinks yeah. that it's the men that should be forward sexually, not the women. So yeah, like you said, with Trudy in series two, he kind of he doesn't mm. know how to handle that. Seeing Donna mm. just being forward with Ricky, he definitely doesn't know how to handle that. So yeah, mm. I think you might be right. And uh, there's a yeah. bit, I think it might even be this episode where um, actually no, it's in a later episode where uh, Gareth asks if she might be a lesbian. And he goes, I think I know a woman under my roof oh, yeah. would like to likes to roll around with other women. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I mean? He's a weird about that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah Brent's, Brent's quite childish with things like that. He shows quite a childish side to himself. That scene yeah. with Gareth when he comes in with that phone. Yeah. What if, as soon as the Dave Gareth tries to get David to take his side, he, he just shuts him down completely and just wants to play with his phone. Just wants to take yeah. her away yeah, as a toy, does, yeah, yeah. do the impression. Did I make five calls or six? <laughs> and then like it's a little little beat between the next. It's actually quite funny. It is well. quite funny. I, I was thinking that as yeah. well, and, and I wish that Gervais's merchant had let Tim laugh at that bit, to just to show that Tim's not a complete arsehole. Because Tim, yeah. Tim Tim doesn't give him anything, but that's quite a little good, no, 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 good little does. joke, isn't it? Tim says spot on. As yeah, a, no, but only after he does on. it when he when he first no, holds up. Because you see, Tim holds it or reveals that he's got a little bit of affection. Brent. Yeah, there's you another know, there's, moments where he'll yeah yeah there's another one later on in the episode as well. But the first time yeah. when Brent holds up the gun and he goes, uh, "I know what you're thinking. Did I make five or six calls?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it just cuts to, to Tim staring at him. And I'm like, oh, "Come on, mate. You know he's making the joke. Just just laugh." And Gross. I think Brent Brent kind of does these makes these jokes specific. I, I think he kind of Tim's his audience really. Yeah, of course. He, he's not. Tim's laugh, yeah, yeah, exactly. He, I, I think he knows, but like he doesn't need to try. He's not. He's never going to win over Keith because Keith's just a blank canvas. Yeah. He's already won over yeah. Gareth. He's no. his mate. I think he makes these jokes for the benefit of Tim. He thinks Tim's the kind of guy that yeah. I want to be mates with. If I can be mate with Tim, if I can be joking with Tim. That would like that make his day, I think. But there was a time though. Do you remember that though, when people first started getting mobile phones and they used to have these most ridiculous holsters? It happened a little bit when the Bluetooth head speaker things yeah. came out. Yeah. People thought they were suddenly James Bond. Yeah. Walking around. And well, that suddenly, yeah, that, that and another point of the episode really set me suddenly put me into the mind of two thousand one because yeah. they are, yeah. Not I mean, he keeps calling it his it's, it's, it's yeah, it's port, portable telephone, and that was like that made me think. Oh yeah, in two thousand and one. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I had a mobile. Phone. And obviously, Brent's not seen many of them because yeah. his first thought is to pretend to be Clint Eastwood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was something <laughs> impressive. This, his, his, his crappy little fifty quid phone from Tesco. Yeah, was yeah. was something impressive. About it. And then in the next scene, we see that he's Brent's talking about email and being on the world wide yeah, web. Yeah, that's true. Which even in two thousand one, that was only like two or three years after. The internet had really come into its own. Email etiquette clearly hadn't kicked in because he leans over one of his employees. And yeah, opens yeah, up an email. yeah, yeah. So that's something you wouldn't get. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah, true. As part of opening that email, we get the kickoff for the for the plot, I suppose, of this episode. Yeah, definitely. Which is that picture that suddenly erupts in laughter around <laughs> the office. Donna should not have to see me as a woman with two men doing that all over me. If anyone wants to draw that and send it to us, oh, please yeah. do. We'll put it, yeah, we'll put it uh, up on the, uh, Never the, give up. the Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep up the photoshopping, please. But anyway, this is a wonderful moment because not only does Brent see the picture, he has to react to it. So he hasn't seen it in private. He's seen it out on the office floor. Yeah. People know he's seen it, so he has no and, choice but to grab this and go. And most it. importantly, Donna's seen it. And, exactly, and yeah. Undermine his authority. His just falls with Donna straight away. Not and I think the key really thing is, he's it. actually very angry that he's been humiliated. But to save face with the cameras, he decides to to adopt this pseudo feminist take because yeah. it offends women, which I hate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's what it's all about. Because I'm in it. it. He's like, makes a point. Not because I'm in it. It clearly yeah. is because he's in it. Which he clearly is. Yeah, he's exactly. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's trying to say, I like a laugh. But you know, sexism. But this lots. offends women. You know, know, not me. Not it funny. offends women. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Which definitely is a thread through the episode, yeah. Really, yeah. Brent, Brent, yeah, trying to prove, yeah. Brent trying to prove to the cameras how much of the, of the feminist he is, how much he loves women. The next bit, I mean, the, the wonderful bit about this is not only does he sort of double down with this whole it's, fe- it's sexism, which I hate, but he then says, whoever's done this, and I don't know who he is, and then he sort of thinks, oh, God, it might not have been a bloke, it might have been a woman. So he, yeah. he, he makes this I leap. I want to show equality again. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So he makes this leap to try and be equal and, and all the rest of it. He might be a woman. Women are just as filthy as men. I don't know any. But women are dirty. <laughs> which is one of the... Which that's got one of and the most... That is an, a, an iconic line. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's one of the most quoted lines. And you can and I remember it. Brought back very fond memories with my friend when we were watching The Office when I was about 15. He had it on VCR. 
of that particular scene, I suppose, just in absolute hysterics. As he yeah. says it, you can hear him almost falter a little bit, like as if he's realising as he says it. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That yeah. This, is not, yeah. This, is, this is a dumb thing I'm saying, but yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 saying it's coming out yeah, now. It's too late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this is constantly the, the theme, isn't it? He yeah. has to keep doubling down and yeah. keep, uh, hedge and keep yeah. increasing his bets because he, uh, there's no way out. It's easier than backtracking. Yeah, yeah, it just keeps rolling and rolling. We see in the next scene where he's there with Gareth and they're talking about it just gets just bigger and bigger and bigger when they're talking about Dutch women. In. in fact, now that we think about it, that actually is a thread on this episode, isn't it? It just escalates and escalates and escalates, and it's just a, a web of uh, this sort of, I don't know, this sort of pretend, this false f- facade that he's not sexist, and he just layers it and layers it and layers it to the final point in the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, quite, there's quite a lot of escalation in the first few episodes as well. You know, there's that escalation between Brent and Dawn in the first episode. Yeah. In this episode, between him and Jennifer... There's like an escalation with his web of lies that he weaves. Yeah. And you know, know what? it's because he uh, Julie Anderton. But it seems like <laughs> she it's, never existed, did she? You know. <laughs> but it's because at no point does he say hands up, I was wrong. Yeah. Do you know yeah. Hands I mean? up, I'm an idiot. But do you know what I mean? Yeah. If at any point Which he gets the opportunity to, yeah, yeah exactly. he doesn't take it. Yeah, yeah. But if at any, yeah. If at any he point, to, yeah. he could diffuse the whole like massive, you know, the, the whole the whole build. He could just diffuse the whole thing at any point by just coming clean and just saying, "Oh shit, that was a bit silly" or, or whatever. But he just doesn't. But it's all about because, and this is the main thing that David Brent is. It's about his pride isn't it he's exactly. just got too much pride way too much pride and that and that kind of that kind of uh, is the engine for every single thing he does he's just pride. painting himself into a corner over and over again yeah yeah and then so yeah so we've got to get and especially in this scene where they're talking about um brent put, puts himself in the corner feels like he has to go on the internet to prove his yeah point. and then ends, yeah. Up, ends up looking up dutch girls must have must, must be punished for having well, yeah. a big there's a really funny moment in, in this scene as well when they're arguing over who hates sexism more yeah yeah and he goes well yeah, I've, yeah. You know, I've said it well we've both said it yeah well we've had yeah. meetings where we've both said i've it. always said that and then yeah. he sort of waves him <laughs> off and just goes oh. again <laughs> trying to prove it for the cameras yeah he's he's he, and not only does he want to be funny but he wants to be kind of this kind of philosophical, kind of wise yeah. sage. The most the philosophical. Yeah, and he's desperate to do it in front of the cameras as well. It's, it's not, it's not yeah, like you pointed out earlier, uh, Jack. He, he said, have, we've got access to the internet. It's not censored. Is that a good or a bad thing? Yeah. He wants to tackle the big issues. Yeah, in front the of cameras, the cameras, exactly. Yeah, 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 precisely, yeah. Bishop Mazurewa. <laughs> And then, of course, Jennifer turns up. Yeah. This meeting is wonderful because this meeting, obviously, is the follow-up to the last meeting we just had with Jennifer in the first episode where she basically lays it down to Brent that he could lose his job. And not only could he lose his job, but all of his staff could lose their job as well. So it's a really Mm -hmm. serious time. And he's in direct competition with Neil, who we're yet to meet at this point. And she comes in and says... Meet for a long time, actually. Absolutely. She comes in and says, right, I've just been with Neil. He's made some really big changes. You said you were going to make some changes. What have you done? But, but well, what it shows of... is he's got some big decisions to make at this point. He's got some big things to do and sort out. But he's been way too busy showing off for the cameras. Exactly. And, I think... and, and, yeah. and I don't... Being, being everyone's best mate, or trying to be everyone's best mate, trying to be funny. That he's just completely forgotten about all that shit. So when he's questioned on it, he's like, uh, and he also, doesn't know what to say. He can't, he can't even come up with something off the top of his head. Like, yeah. he, he, no, he, he can't his management speak. I actually think there's more to it than just being forgetful or incompetent. I think it's just that he can't do the hard edges of his job. Yeah, like, yeah, anything, yeah. Anything, like, anything like redundancies or confronting people, he can't actually do it. And we're about to see very hard evidence of that at the end of this episode. Well, wait till we get to Stitch Up Corner. But this yes. is damning. There's yeah. some really good bits because I think Jennifer definitely knows how to work him. I don't think she's being sort of bitchy or trying to have a, a you know, um, just be spiteful. I think she's basically just trying to manipulate him to act in a certain way because she's worked with him before. So to say that he hates management speak, basically it snookers him so that he can't use management speak. Later on in this scene, she says, if you can't manage the cutbacks, that's why I'm your boss. I can do it for you. And he does not like that. Exactly. He doesn't like it. And he knows, she knows that that will sort of... They hate that, yeah. Yeah, she knows that that will sort of kick him into action so that he'll go off and do something. And again, later on, you're not man enough to do your job. I'll do it for you. Straight away, he's off. If you don't have the guts. Yeah, exactly. She's goading <laughs> don't him. Don't have the guts. And, and, he, and playing him like a violin. And, 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 he, yeah. and he rises every time. And it's, I think it's specifically because a woman's doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and yeah. on camera. And then that's where yeah. the whole Julie Anderson thing comes from. But yeah. again, how does he possibly think it's going to work? How does he think it's going to work? <laughs> yeah, exactly. How on earth? No, he, he must know it's not going to work. Get away with that uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's sat there on it, and she, and she knows. She knows as soon as she says it. She knows it's yeah, part yeah. because she doesn't. She knows everyone in the warehouse. She doesn't know Julie Anderson. And she knows that she's going to stitch him up once again. Exactly. Yeah, she yeah. knows right. But we're going to go through this. But, but he's he, but he's like a, a a kid at school where he knows as well that he's fucked this one up. But he's yeah. going to have to just go. He's got to go through with it. Now he's yeah. in. 
He said uh, he's fired someone. He says her name's Julie, and he just has to keep yeah, going through it, all the way to the surname, all the way down to the physical warehouse where he's then he probably knows that he's then going to have to prove it. But it, but it, it gets so much. What happens in the warehouse is worse than he could have possibly have imagined. <laughs> it becomes far more. Than yeah. Julie, it becomes far more than Julie Anderson when he gets down there. As you guys may or may not know, doing a podcast isn't free. So here is a word from our sponsors who make all of this possible. Are you starting a new business and need a striking visual image? In this competitive market, it's vital that your company logo stands out from the crowd. Your future business hasn't happened yet, but here at Stockport Graphics, we tailor our designs to your needs as your business expands and grows. With Stockport Graphics, you're in the driving seat. Thanks. This is scary, This is scary, David. David. Yeah. Please stop tying up so much. Don't tie up any And She's starting to learn more and more. He's taking his eye off the ball and... And then I love the way Brent, he really wants to be, as soon as he sees Taffy, Taffy or Tuffy? I think it's Taffy. It's Taffy. He I'd... wants to be like, oh, Taffy, Taffy, but he doesn't he's respond. my mate, he's a warehouse, you know. Yeah. He doesn't respond. To but he just doesn't dream. respond. Yeah, because yeah. he's, he's not expecting Brent's voice to yeah, come exactly. out with Taffy. Or he's just engrossed with Gaza. Yeah. You can, ima- you can imagine Glyn coming out to Lee and Dawn's house on there. Uh... Lee probably made Dawn hold the camera. And some beers. <laughs> yeah, on the weekend. And, they yeah, and, they're like, sort of... and they're like, oh, let's show Mr. Gazza and the guys in the warehouse on Monday. No, no, Gazza's the dog. And Dawn's oh, sort of really, dog. really wishing she was with Tim, you know, yeah. watching these idiots filming the dog shagging, going, oh, thinking, oh, I wish I was with Tim, you know. <laughs> what are you watching? That's my dog shagging his dog. Jennifer challenges these lads, you know, do you know what I mean? They, she, they say to her, can you take this upstairs, we're busy. And she challenges him, as any manager would and probably should, and says, you don't look busy. And instead of saying, oh, sorry, we'll get back to our work, he says, well, do you want me to get busy, love? Do you know what I mean? He sort of... <laughs> yeah, they they probably don't rec- I don't think they recognise Jennifer. They well, don't well, know Jennifer. But then the next thing, to say, you'll be next, Gazza likes some posh. <laughs> I mean, let's just unpack that for a second, what he's actually suggesting. <laughs> no, because I never thought about the fact that Gazza was the dog. No, 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 Gazza's the dog. Yeah, I never... Yeah, but now it makes sense. Now it makes sense, but I never thought about the fact that Gaz was. I thought Gaz was the little bald guy. No, 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 no. Gaz is the dog. But Gaz is the dog. Because yeah. he says, oh, this is the dog. So, so he's saying, so, he, I thought, so that's essentially what he's saying. He's saying, the dog will shag you next. Yes. Yeah. Jesus, which, I, I didn't realise it. Which is, why, which is why Brent, as he explains, has that graphic image of Jennifer literally on her the hands and knees yeah. being done doggy style. With Gareth Gareth dog, doggy style. Now it makes sense. I mean, why does he <laughs> come Gareth, out of that line? After do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not being funny. Just in. Can I just ask? I, I was thinking about this. Can you imagine how Neil would have reacted in that situation? I was just about to say this. Imagine if Neil and Jennifer were walking down yeah. and walking through Taffy, the warehouse. Tap, that Taffy could have quite legitimately just been fired for that. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You sh- absolutely should have been fired. But he's, Neil, he's at the very least, have, like you know, been like taken to a meeting and given a proper bollocking. But instead, Brent tries well, to like off, and Taffy actually morning, laughs really. at him. He goes, "Ooh, hang on, hang on." Suggesting that his dog should fuck this woman. <laughs> yeah. He should have definitely been fired on the spot. Forget having a telling off or a discipline. That's Gross misconduct. He should have marched out. Which is kind of unrealistic that Jennifer, knowing that that Brent isn't going to do it, doesn't go back to her office that evening and say, because she knows him, he is. Glyn Glyn Tafferson or whatever his name is. She's mortified. And actually, this Glyn character, I I have a little guilty pleasure here that I like to think that Glyn and that all of this office is in the same universe as the in-betweeners and that actually Tuffy is indeed he's the same character he's the same guy he's the same bloke he's perfect I don't know what the actor's name is but he's perfect he's got a really horrible slimy yeah he's yeah he's he's, he's, he's got he's a warehouse foreman he just is him the really horrible he's such a horrible yeah he's a horrible punchable guy but yeah he's perfect his name is David Shaw Seth is the actor's name David Shaw David Fowl Shaw I I shall look it up <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, David Shaw, yeah, I, yeah, I, I love the idea of being such a when answer. you get home. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's the fact that, yeah, he just laughs at him, but he just goes, ooh. Pathetic. Is it? While this uh, storyline is going on with uh, Jennifer um, walking around the office and, 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 it, and telling Brent about the uh, redundancies, we've also still got that parallel storyline mm-hmm. of Gareth's investigation. Gareth loves doing the investigation. It's yeah. his favourite thing. It makes yeah. him feel important. You know, yeah, he, has have, he has to have his room. He has to have his little investigation in progress <laughs> sign. I love that. And again, yeah. this is this is this this whole plot line is classic sitcom stuff. Not realistic in any mm. way, but it, the show gets away with it. And because it's sandwiched in between these other little scenes, little cutaways of. of uh, is it June the cleaner putting yeah. the bins out? Yeah, yeah you're exactly. Right, yeah. yeah, so and so yeah, so Merchant and Gervais get away with these more kind of heightened uh, scenes of like yeah, Gareth doing his, inve- his investigation. There's three interviews with Gareth. The first one is obviously with with Donna, 
Yeah. Which is a wonderful scene where he sort of, he, he, he straddles the sort of authoritative side and the flirtatious side and sort of tries to show her this hard man who's also got a sensitive side. Yeah. You know, is it's it a shitless list, list, list a great film. Is, is that what he says? Yeah, 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 brilliant. Isn't it a great film? As if that sort of, that's going to open her eyes that this lech actually is. Yeah. Oh my God, you're Oh, wow. Gervais and Merchant love to take digs of shitless list. I think yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they use that as a, in, in, in the XFM podcast and yeah. in uh, Century Junction. Stand up. They take, they, 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 yeah, they take little bit, but they, Gervais obviously sees Schindler's List as the, like, the ultimate, really sincere, like just deadly, artistic, deadly serious artistic film, which needs to be pulled down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he likes to show sure, Liam Neeson is, you know. Is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah, yeah. But they, he, he gets a lot of jokes out of uh, the fact of how serious Schindler's List is. And how so obviously, got we've got yeah. uh, Gareth doing his sort of CSI investigation. You yeah. know, in the, the darkened room, yeah. flickering with the what are they? The blinds, trying to yeah. you know get Keith to say something. And Keith's obviously really nervous. <laughs> all, all these moves that Gareth is putting on, like yeah, with his little gun holster, and with yeah. cold, closing the blinds, with his sign outside, Opening they're the all working on Keith. And yeah, that's a brilliant yeah. introduction to his character because yeah, because yeah, he's, he's very faced. He's flustered. Isn't yeah, because yeah, uh, I, I mean no, because <laughs> in the first episode we've seen him like in little cutaways, but this is the first time we really get a sense of his character. See, and... Yeah, I think Keith, Big Keith is one of those guys that he's just a side character. I don't think he was ever intended to be much of a mainstay. Yeah, but I think he's. I think the way that you and you and Macintosh has has made that character his own and actually brought a bit of personality out in it. He's become almost iconic of the yeah, show. Yeah. Which kind of parallels how he got the role in the in the first place? Like mm. he was he he was cast as just one of the office people, in, like to be an extra in the background. Yeah, where, like, he'd be in every episode, but only in little cutaways. And then yeah, I think I guess this must be the scene because I've heard the story with Gervais and Merchant have told where they gave him like a little you know a couple of lines of dialogue to really kind of like. This to, isn't to, that scene though. That's the one in the next step in training when he's doing his answering machine and he's recording an answering machine and he said, "I'm on training all day today." Oh, okay. So, and they just so, fell so, apart so, and so that's the scene that really inspired them to give him more. Yeah. So they gave him this scene anyway. But yeah, he's he's great in this scene as well. Though. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's, there's not many of the side characters I can think of beyond him that really jumps out. Maybe. No, no, it's, it's not like the, it's not like the American one where all the side characters were given like were given no. like, their own little time to kind of really um, shine. In the in the uh, British office, there's there's Brent, there's Tim, there's Dawn, there's Gareth. There's some sometimes Finchie, yeah. sometimes and, and then Neil, and but really it's it's that it's those four it's those main four, ones, yeah, exactly. There's you four don't... main characters in this as opposed to one main character like in the American Office yeah. and all the rest because it's almost like in the American Office the Tim character, what's his name, Jim, Jim. is almost up there with Kevin, yeah, and and those other characters they're yeah, but, not quite as prominent, but they're they're not exactly yeah, but they're a bit, but they're all given a bit of time to shine. Like yeah, at exactly. some at some point in that in that run of, of episodes they they get their own storylines and stuff in the yeah in the English Office. There's only twelve episodes in this in the Christmas specials, so I've really got to cut all the fat. But yeah, but, but Keith, Keith is still Keith is still given some time to shine, and yeah, he, he's great in it. Obviously, Gareth's uh, efforts to try and come across as an intimidating um, interrogator work on Keith, yeah. but they absolutely don't on Tim and Dawn because then Tim and Dawn yeah. come in and they have, they have an interview with him and. They turn around on Gareth and they say, "Will you get fired if you don't find out?" And he's, "Well, I'm doing it now. I'm doing it now." And then it's like, yeah, you can kind of see a flash in his eyes, like he suddenly dawns on him, like, "Oh, will I? I don't know. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I didn't ask. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I, we didn't get really, a conversation. We go that far." Example of Tim and Dawn's, you know, interplay and how they get so much pleasure out of this. You know, essentially, what's just a sort of time wasting exercise is winding up Gareth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they just bond so closely over that. You know, like. Dawn is in the wrong relationship. She would never have that much fun with Lee. Exactly. You know, and you know that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you can really you see, I, I hadn't ever really thought about it before I watched it again this uh, earlier today. But when Tim's going through the signs, like Gareth Keenan, oh, I love that. I love those signs. Uh, what's, what's some more of the signs? I can't even remember them now. Investigation. In Investigation. In process. Investigation. In process. In process. In process. Yeah. 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 Process. Doesn't even make sense. Um, yeah. While he's doing yeah. all that. I'd forgotten that it's Tim that goes through all of them, and Dawn's just looking at him with like these really kind of excited yeah, puppy yeah. dog eyes. Like, and well, she's enamoured by Tim as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. And like it. you said, Seth, it's because she's never going to. This is probably the most fun she's going to have all day. And I bet she wakes up every morning yeah. looking forward to having these yeah. this time with Tim because we've seen Lee in the last episode, and they clearly you can tell yeah. straight away in thirty seconds they don't have that kind of relationship. And Lee isn't no. going to make her laugh like that. But Dawn looks at yeah. Tim when he's going through those signs with yeah the same kind of excitement as. As as Brent looks at Finchy in later episodes, like there's just this kind of yeah. enamoured. So so Dawn and Tim are uh, kind of their their relationship is uh, a bit like a car it, it, <laughs> 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 it, it kind of it is it kind of it's moved on in this episode. Yeah, and Dawn asks Tim to play with her hair. Well, there's which one is a nice little parallel to 
Dawn playing with Tim's hair in the first yeah. episode. And there's a lovely little moment as well where you see this sort of... I think Donna and it's actually in the next bit where, where Donna and Ricky and Tim are doing the Michael Jackson thing and Donna's got her hands on Tim trying to show him how to lean back yeah. and, and there's, a, there's just a little background shot of Dawn just leaning on the desk watching just longingly watching because she, yeah. she's it's, not allowed to step away from the desk well, she's yeah. chained to that desk this character trait of not following her dreams is something that follows Dawn through as a character in yeah. general because yeah, think yeah. about her career really what she wants to do is be an artist yeah. and really what she wants to do is be with Tim yeah. but instead she chooses the safe reliable Old fashioned. Yeah, she says that, doesn't she? And she even admits it. She sticks with. She admits it in her talking heads over and over again. But let's not forget. Later episodes. Even by the end of series episode two, we haven't got a talking head of Dawn yet. We really don't see We We don't see this. We still haven't got. We don't see it until the training one. That's when we first see Dawn as a talking head. So if if we're just taking it episode by episode, by the end of, if new viewers who who get to the end of episode two still haven't really got a, a, a hang on who Dawn is. I wonder if there was deliberate, like maybe she wasn't meant to be a big character. Maybe maybe this was sort of supposed to be as big a character as Big Keith. I pardon the pardon. <laughs> no, you know what I, mean? I think maybe it just wasn't deliberate. I think maybe I just hadn't thought about it. I think Sexist. They, yeah, no, well, I think, I think maybe they just, I think maybe they just didn't want to show us too much of her until. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it, it, it's, I, I'm, 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 yeah, yeah. this is why I like, I, I'm, I'm enjoying watching them through in sequence with like thinking about it like this, trying to trying to put all the context out of my head because it will be interesting to to, to really analyse what what episode we first. I mean, you've already said it. Is it the next one? Well, what quiz? Well, we quiz. first where we first get some talking heads of Dawn. First, we really no, get the central train, issues. Isn't it? Oh, okay, so it's not even until episode four. Well, yeah, I'm so, not but, sure. But we re- so which ep- yeah in the episode where we really episode. start yeah so in the episode where we really start to see her talking heads and getting a, a, hang, a, a deal on who she is, it would be interesting to see to think about why Gervais Merchant chose that point to do that. Oh, do you know? Uh, the investigation has climaxed and Gareth walks in right in the middle of David Brent describing... You, naked, on all fours, being quite literally done doggy style. David? So this is now, in Brent's head, a perfect chance to redeem himself after the warehouse disaster by going in and showing what a good manager he is, doing his job with Tim. See, I can't believe he thinks that Jennifer would be more interested in the outcome of Gareth's investigation than actually dealing with this massive issue with sexism, which he supposedly hates... It just shows to me that it's almost a plot hole how rea- how out of kilter he is with reality. Do you know what I mean? He must know that that's a big no, deal. No, it makes perfect sense in the context of that. Because he's scared of the people in the warehouse. He's intimidated by them. They're proper men. Whereas Tim, he thinks is an easy target. No, but it's, it, 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 and also, this is, this is brilliant writing by Mer- Gervais and Merchant, making the two plot lines kind of merge together. The whole redundancy thing with, with yeah. Jennifer in the warehouse and Gareth doing his investigation about the pornographic photograph. That merges together these two plot lines. And also... In the reality of the show, it gives Brent an excuse and a way to prove to Jennifer, right, right you might think that I approve of sexism because of what you saw in the warehouse, but I don't because there's sexism going on no, in the Yeah, office. that's true, I guess. So they, it kind of comes together. Not only does it come together like uh, in, a, in a writing way for, from Gervais and Merchant, but in the reality of the show, it comes together where the two things coalesce and it would have, and it would, if it had gone through, it would have given Brent a perfect excuse to show to Jennifer, right, I'm not, I'm not mm. sexist. Had he been able to follow through and fire Tim if it had been correct, but obviously it's not. But he was totally uh, uh, he was totally un- uneasy going after Tim at that point because the only reason he did it is because Jennifer pushed him right to the edge of his of his tether when yeah. she said, yeah. "If you're not man enough, I will do your job for you." So he can't have that because yeah. ultimately he is a misogynist. So he stands up and he wanders over to Tim and he and it's this really awkward exchange when he throws the floppy disk onto the table and he goes, "What's that?" Mm. Yeah. I think it's awkward for two reasons. Number one, because he's not really, he doesn't really want to do confrontations. Does yeah, he? He's, like, he, he, he's desperate, and like he's desperate for people to like him, and like we said, he's especially desperate for Tim to like him. Mm. Number two, he does genuinely like Tim, so I think he's a bit disappointed. But yeah. oh, is it come? I'm gonna have to Good man. Good because man. because Jennifer's right there. I kind of am gonna have to fire him now. I, think. Yeah, I don't and, think he was. Jennifer's fire prodded him. one too many times in his insecurities. He's feeling emasculated and. He's feeling like you know that that line is key where she says, "If you're not man enough to do your job, I think you're right, James." That's the point where he feels like, right, fuck it, I'll show her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's, his ego and his insecurity outweighs his not wanting to confront him. And then when he does it, as you say, it's very awkward, it's very stunted, he doesn't really want to do it. And also, one but thing. Then, of course, it was Chris Finch all along. So it's not offensive now, it's Chris Finch. Who suddenly appears from out the shadows now? Malcolm. Malcolm. Yeah. Straight there. <laughs> Doing his usual I've even old, loaded David slimy Brent. Malcolm. Yes. I've even written that in who my notes. Friend, Malcolm circling. Yes, he's Malcolm, who this podcast hates. I just yes. want to reiterate. Yeah. 
If you if you've forgotten last episode, we hate Malcolm. So as soon as Malcolm senses a bit of uh, you know tension in the air, that there's blood in the water, he's circling around David and Jennifer to hear the outcome of yes. this confrontation. And so it's okay now that it's your good friend, the Chris Finch. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. it's not offensive. Again. Such a little Cause, weasel. Cause, he's worse than that. His little backtrack, Brent. Oh no, no, it is funny. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we already know, we already know by this point that Chris Finch is a bit of a sexist from his like, intervention in episode one. And we haven't yeah. even met him yet. This is, this is the great thing. We haven't met Finch yet, but if, if Finch's name now has been brought up twice in, but, in the two episodes. We basically already know he's going to be a dick before yeah. we even oh, see well, him. But, but Brent has, has hyped him up as this heavyweight intellectual, you know, this really funny, smart, chewed yeah. on guy who's you know, going to blow you away when you meet yeah. him. And you know, you, know, you know he's going to be some sort of disappointment. You don't know how, quite how much. Well, I, rem- I remember when I, when I was watching it, I was wondering if Finchy was going to be a classic character that you never see. Like yeah. They keep on talking about yeah. Finchy, but you never quite see him. Yeah. yeah. See, actually, obviously, Chris Finch is a prick. We know this at this point, even without having met him. But he's obviously pretends to be David's friend. He said, oh, David, he said you'd find it hilarious. But the fact that, David, that Finch would have so little respect for David that A, he would do it. And even if he did it and showed it to David and thought they both thought it was a laugh, then fine. But the fact that behind David's back, he sent it to all of his staff. <laughs> do you really think he would find it? But not Brett. But not Brett. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not <laughs> and as soon as Tim tells him, you can tell like, immediately he oh, knows. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, Finch. Oh. But once again, can't back out. He, yeah. he's, he's got to double down. He's got to just put everything on the table. He's got to go all in. And he's got to just, uh, no, Jennifer. no, no, it is funny. It is funny. But the question but I've got... Still, so- Case closed. Is, is, right? Yeah. So so Jennifer wanted him to fire Chris. She was like, right, so you're going to have to fire Finch now. Are you going to fire Finch? Mm. Just because he phoned up the talking clock in this instance, it, does Jennifer seems to let that go because we now we know from a future episodes that Finch doesn't get fired. Yeah, well, she that basically what's happened here is she's... Well, he's a bloody good rep, isn't he? Well, <laughs> David's marked his card. She's basically more disappointed in David than she ever was. So she lets Chris it go. Finch. She lets Ultimately, the Finch thing go. She doesn't give a toss about Chris Finch making a picture. She's yeah. got massive problems, like proper problems about redundancies yeah. and stock and all this other stuff. She genuinely doesn't yeah. give a toss about this. All yeah, she's yeah. doing is calling him on his bullshit. So, you know, it's understandable that she doesn't care if Chris Finch gets fired. Mm. Nobody cares about this picture as much as David does. No, no. But one thing I like about this scene, which we kind of glossed over, but just to go back to it, is that before all this kicks off and we find out that it was actually Finchie that did it, when when Brent thinks that it's Tim that did it and that he's reluctantly going to have to fire Tim because Jennifer's hanging over his shoulder, Tim's going, like, you know, making a joke, like, oh, you had your best man on my case, did you? Gareth found that I did it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it must yeah. be me. And and Brent, actually, for, for one of the only times yeah, in the whole yeah. series, acts really sincere. It's like... Tim, stop joking around, you know, stop messing around with this, this is serious. And we actually get to see a glimpse of maybe what how he's acted before, but he definitely hasn't acted this way in front of the cameras. Yeah. Brent being serious and being sincere. And, and it's actually, such a shame, isn't it? Because he gets that that few seconds of being a sincere, like, de- yeah. de- de- proper boss, and then it's snatched away from him, isn't it? Just yeah. saying, it wasn't me, it was your good friend, Chris Finch. Checkmate, you're done. That, you don't know what yeah. I mean? That's yeah. it, and he's got nowhere no to go. case to argue with. Absolutely, yeah. Case, case closed. <laughs> Shouldn't I say that, as it was my investigation? <laughs> but what about, Danny, what about your investigation into uh, whether or not this was a stitch-up? We, well, we oh, yeah. It's like, it's like the stitch-up corner yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so, Danny, here's the jingle. Oh, yeah, play the jingle. Here's the jingle. Stitch-up. It was a stitch-up. So now it's time for Stitch Up Corner. <laughs> Love well, that jingle. I think, to be honest, this, this is not so, a vintage episode for David Brent. Let's just say that. Well, I think it's a cracking episode for Stitch Up Corner because I it's think if absolutely any damning. More indictments that this is a stitch yeah, up. It this... has the most smoking guns. No, 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 no. So no. let's just remind our audience Stitch Up Corner is yeah. where we investigate whether, whether or not David Brent is actually a good boss and whether he's been stitched up by the editing of the BBC. In and, the reality of the show. Yeah, in the reality of the show. And there is some theories which, if Danny is a proponent, where there is clues and there's these smoking guns that prove that Brent is a good boss and that he was uh, yeah, stitched up by the BBC. All right, so what is the evidence in this episode for him well, being stitched up? We've got the best one of all. It works with the turtle. What's that? He's basically, it's a scene where we can't actually see him. We don't see any context, but we just see him saying it works with the turtle and everyone's laughing. It works with the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, okay, good. Suggesting to me that he's just delivered a good anecdote that's made everyone laugh, to generate a lot of rapport with everyone, but... The camera has not been allowed to see that, and perhaps if it's happened that time, maybe it's happened lots of other times, but then okay. he's never filmed that. Even Tim gives That's a genuine, what I, yeah. even Tim gives a genuine laugh at that bit. I know. Everyone's laughing genuinely. I think yeah. even Malcolm's in there. We've got it worked with the turtle in favour of it being a stitch up. I would posit that everything else in this episode is evidence to the contrary, except for. I noticed, I noticed one tiny little scene with um, the woman who. Brent's walking around when he's talking about the emails just before hit the the, sec, the picture of him 
sucking off the two guys or whatever. Is he sucking them off? Revealed. No, no but, 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 but they're both Jason. They're both Jason. <laughs> <laughs> he goes up to um, a woman who's sitting there and he says, "No shopping" or something like that. And she kind of uh, and she laughs as well. Yeah, that's a funny little joke. That's, that's true. And also, and also, right. you could argue that that sounds like management speak. You hate that. It's also been an indictment of a stitch up. You know, if like, you think so. But yeah. Brent, once upon a time, when you were the, the boss you used to be, yeah. you used to hate all that management speak. So why are you suddenly mm. speaking like that now the cameras are on? And also the major thing, clearly, we're, we're, we're forgetting, is the fact that his friends, Ron and Elaine, have allowed him yeah. to look after their daughter. Just a bit of Even a... though she acts like, you know, dismissively towards him. Should we do a stitch up scale? Yeah. Scale so... to ten. <laughs> It's funny you should say that, Seth. I've just done a, 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 a I've drawn a, a little, I've drawn a little uh, stitch up swingometer on this on my <laughs> piece of paper here, and I'm definitely the arrow is leaning more towards plonker on my piece of paper. I don't I know about you guys. Yeah. So I'm if, if if one is a stitch up and ten is a plonker, I'm on eight and a half easily at this point. I mean, play, playing along and just assuming that I, I said my piece last in the last in the first episode about whether or not it was just plot holes by Merchant and Gervais's writing. Playing along, and if in the reality of the show, where it's actually a documentary but went out, I think yes, Brent is just a crap boss mm. and a plonker. I don't think it's a stitch up. Danny, I course. think this is probably one of his worst episodes, so I'm going to give it a seven. Okay, but so this is probably this is I, one of this is probably one of his worst episodes. You know, yeah, in, ter- in, in, in terms of showing that he's a plonker, he, he's, this is a new situation for him, and he's of having to face his redundancy thing, and he's on telly. It's, so it's a, like a combination. It's made of a meltdown. So but, Danny, is there going to be episodes that come up that, that, that prove to you that it was a stitch up again? Then, Possibly. bearing in mind this is the one with the turtle. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The turtle. But, but, I'll, I'll, I'll still won't give it a right. seven. Thing is, the, tur- the turtle yeah. is what it all really yeah. hangs on, isn't it? Yeah. So no, there's other there's other evidence. All right. Let's put this to bed. Let's I'm going to go around the table and you have to say stitch up or plonker. Danny. Plonker. Seth. Plonker. Jack. Yeah, plonker. Yeah. Plonker. There you go. Sorry, David. Plonkers all round. Well, in a way. Series two is where you become more sympathetic. In a way. But <laughs> series one is just going to be hard. As, as a last note on oh, this. As an accent to Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> as a last note on this, to end this, uh, to, to end stitch up corner for episode two, if you think about the way documentaries are made, Obviously, the producers and the directors would have would would have some kind of narrative they want to push. So yeah, they would say, right, he's keeping the scenes where he's acting like a plonker because they're funny. But if he hadn't given them that material to to use, then they wouldn't be able to do it. So I mean, if he's acting like a plonker ninety percent of the time and then ten percent of the time he's telling turtle jokes, mm. they, they're going to say, get rid of that ten percent. Yeah, 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 I'll leave that here. <laughs> 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 when I was a kid, when I was 15, I went on a documentary by Dispatches about the effects of computer game violence. Yeah. Did you really? Are we, were you stitched? Is this and your stitch up corner? was a stitch up <laughs> <laughs> well, took hours of footage of us playing computer games. They asked us loads of different questions. And then they asked us really leading questions about, so what kind of violence specifically is there in this game? And then I said, I was describing the game Carmageddon. I don't know if any of you yeah, remember it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and they said, so uh, they asked us a question. Specifically, what kind of violence was in the game? And I said, well, you can run people over, and then you can reverse and run over them again, and then run over them again and again. I wasn't saying whether that was a good or a bad thing. But then at the beginning of the program, there was sinister music playing, and my voice <laughs> <laughs> you can run people over, and you can reverse, and you can run over them again. This is brilliant. I can't believe you've never brought this up before. You've got like <laughs> you, you've got the ultimate yeah. r- r- relationship with I've Brent. Got I can't believe you Although, never mentioned on, this. On this book. particular issue, I'm, I'm thinking plonker as well. I think, yeah, you're one. <laughs> swing on Earth for plonker. No apologies necessary. Let's get on with the quiz. But. And as we do every week, we're now going to do our weekly quiz on Whee! the episode. Unfortunately, Whee! unfortunately, a few of the um, answers have already been discussed oh. in the course of our discussion. And all the answers this week are in the episode. So anyone who's watched it carefully... And with an insane level of geekery, we all know the answers. I think okay. I've, I've got I've, I've got some predictions on what I think the questions. Yeah, me are. too. Yeah. I've been trying to anticipate them by watching the show. Yeah. It was only while I was yeah, writing some notes. I was like, looking at them while I've been out the room. No, 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 we didn't. No, we didn't. No, no. As I was writing, as I was writing my notes when I was watching the episode, I was like, actually, I bet Danny's going to mention that. But I okay. bet you okay. you picked the same one as I have. As well. I bet you, I bet you, we thought there was the two. There was two was things I thought these are going to be questions. All right. So who won last time? Just remind me. Oh yes, of course. All right. So can James defend? Well, well, yeah, second of three. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bit right. shit. so once again, everybody's got some unique buzzers from the show. Seth, what's your buzzer? Okay. Seth is a seedy little man with seedy little jokes. All right, okay. Jack, what's your buzzer? I could catch a monkey. 
Very good. Jack of Captain Monkey <laughs> and James. The women are dirty. Okay. Best one of all. Yeah. Okay, right. So, all right. so okay. okay question Fingers one. on buzzers. All question right. number one. Who tries to leave a message for David Brent when he tells to leave him alone? I did catch him on. Yeah, it's Jack, yeah. Paul, a.k.a. Stephen Merchant. Yeah, what's, what's his surname? Oh, I don't know. I just wrote down Paul. No, he's got a surname as well. Dirty. Paul Shepherd. Paul Shepherd. Oh, James oh, I didn't think about that. I, but I, know, but I knew that was going to be a question. I was like, right, okay, I've got to remember this. That's a good question. Yeah. That yeah, was, I knew that was going to be the question. Yeah, yeah. Was, Stephen the Merchant's cameo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, question number two. Is anyone two. that plays two characters in the show? Who does Gareth oh, recommend? Hang on, my phone's ringing. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Turn your phone off. That's part of it. Sorry, I got it. I got it. I missed you. She left you yet. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay. Sorry. Yeah. So do the question well, again. Who does Gareth recommend the women copy by not wearing a bar and keeping a shirt on? Who, does, who do they copy? Charlie Dimmer. Oh, yes, 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 correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember seeing the subtitle on my yeah. uh, on my Netflix. Charlie well, she was the braless icon of it. Yeah, she yeah, was. The late Again, that sets, sets you back to <laughs> sets you back to two thousand one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. All right, ground force. Sorry, who, was that? who got that? That was Seth. Yeah. Seth, yeah. All right. Okay, question number three. What does David Brent say Finch's IQ is? Okay, women are one hundred and three. Oh no, no, no. Seth. One four two. One four two. Oh, correct. Oh, okay. hey. How are you doing so An odd, oddly precise number, I always think. Uh, yeah, that's four, what's funny about it, isn't it? That's number four, now sense. this is fiendish. I'll yeah. turn out to anyone and get okay. this. How many matches does David Brent get for sex fetish? Are dirty. How many? 2,230. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> this is to be fair, it's in my notes. I should, we, should, we should get rid of our notes when we do this. So my, my, shocking. my second prediction for what the question was, I thought you were going to say... What does Kogita Kogita Ergo Sam? And we talked about yeah. that as well. Yeah, I, th I think next week I might just ask some questions around the episode. No notes as well. Before. We should get rid of our notes. Next question time. number five: What three things does David Brent give as changes he's made to Jennifer? Okay, quite tricky this one. Two uh, point. If you get yeah. one of them, if you get two of them, one then one point. If you get three of them, two points. Uh, no points okay. just for getting one. The women are. How about uh, efficiencies? Yes. Streamlining. No. Productivity? No. Is, that Close. is it efficiency, profitability, turnover? Correct. I was going to say did turnover. You three, correct, yeah. you did. But uh, I mean, James has already given you efficiency. Yeah, James I, was, got one. I knew turnover. Yeah, just give Seth one. Question <laughs> number six. Again, I'm going to do the same all three things. So two points if you get all three of them, one point if you get two of them, nothing if you just get one. Oh, God, so yeah. what three gay artists does Gareth list as evidence that he's not homophobic, that he's got their CDs? <laughs> Uh, Queen, oh, Pet Shop Boys, oh, and oh God, I know this one. That one, John. No. Why is it, James? The women. No. Are George Michael. George Michael, yeah. Okay. Oh. He has to go George Michael twice. You though. can have one point then. Who? Seth. What about me? Well, you'd only got one, didn't you? Oh, why ask me that? <laughs> <laughs> for, for the benefit of the listening audience. Right, um, okay. Number seven. Can we do this for the benefit of a listening audience? Yes. Nothing here is for the benefit of a listening audience. Yeah. Right. What is, well, I assume someone will be listening. <laughs> what is the time sponsored by Accurus at the third stroke? Uh, at the third stroke. Not when. Not the first time he gives, the second time. Four, 21 hey, and 40 seconds. Or very nearly. What was it, Seth? I didn't hear any. No, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to give you that, Jack. To be honest. I know it's, it's forty seconds. I know it's, it's four actually, something. It's actually four twenty-one and fifty seconds. Oh, fifty seconds. When, when, yeah. they, when they first ring up, it's forty seconds. Oh, but then he says at the third yeah, 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 stroke, yeah. it's then fifty seconds. Yeah. All right, quick score yeah. update. Seth is leading the pack with but four. But just for knowing it's four twenty-one, you deserve the four. Well, I knew it was four. Uh, I knew it's something <laughs> was forty. Score seconds. update. Seth is leading with four, followed by James with two, and Jack following up the rear with one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I, got, I got the first one, didn't I? Or did I have I only, have no, I only just got that? You just got the first one just now. That's the first one you got. Oh, right, Number eight. Okay, this is very difficult. What does it say on Tim's computer screensaver right at the very the end? Women are got him. Dirty. Gareth is a Benny. Gareth is a Benny, yes. <laughs> well done, Jack. Right at the very end. Okay, number nine. These are ridiculous. Actually, hard. this is very easy, this one. We've oh, already got the answer to this, please. so it's just going to be fastest thing first. What are the names of Donna's parents? Women. I heard you first, Jack. <laughs> Ron and Elaine. Yes, yeah. one. Ron and Elaine. So yeah. is that it? Yeah. So yeah. so winner is Seth, followed by hey. Jack. Oh man, I'm really amazing comeback. Yeah, no. Followed by me, the previous yeah. winner. Yeah. I swear I got give me give me those questions. I swear I got one at the beginning. 
We can cut this, don't worry. Um, <laughs> yeah, Paul Shepard. You've got Paul Shepard. Yeah, I've got Paul Shepard. No, uh, he said yeah. Paul. Oh, I, I said, said Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. said Paul Shepard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So once again, excellent quiz, Danny. Yeah. Excellent analysis, everybody. This rounds off another episode. Uh, next week, we're going to be releasing the third episode, which is training. Quiz. No, quiz. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, so, and there'll be a and quiz that's the on real that quiz. as well. And that's the real there'll quiz. There'll be a quiz on the quiz. quiz on and the that'll quiz. be the real quiz. Which I'm really looking forward to, because quiz is the, one of the first... I think everyone, is, everyone can uh, attest that quiz is one of the first real classic absolutely it's the first uh, time we get to meet Finchie it's the yeah. first time we take them out of the office environment yeah it takes us out of the office it's the exactly. first time yeah, yeah. we get to see this rivalry between uh, Ricky no yeah Rick, between Ricky and Finchie you know it's a really good sort yeah. of dynamic going there but actually having said that this episode really raised up in my estimation uh after having rewatched it with this with my analytical hat on I want to kind of like I'm going to reevaluate this once once this podcast yeah. series is finished and once I've watched them back because if I'd just been given a list of the episodes like a month ago and told to pick my favourites I wouldn't have picked this one yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have thought I was just yeah. a, it's just a filler episode you know it's not the quiz it's not training day it's not the red nose day one but actually thinking about it like from a critical point of view I, I appreciate it a lot more because it did it really does really kind of act as the first episode again yeah. it kind of resets it like yeah. we, we, we know kind of what to expect now we kind of we, we've got a bit of a wavelength of the humour but this one really kind of launches into it it lets us know the other characters lets us really get to know Brent as the man that wants to be a comedian as well as just trying to be you know a cool boss mm. and kind of puts you in the world sets it up so that you can get episodes like Quiz that really can get mm. the ball rolling so yeah looking forward to watching Quiz yeah absolutely yeah. I can't wait so once again, everybody, thank you for listening. I hope you've all enjoyed this. I hope you've gained a bit more of an insight into the workings of, well, certainly us four, but hopefully some insight into the office as well. And if you want to get in touch and have a com- you know, start a conversation with us or just feed into the conversation, then j- get, drop us a line. Uh, once again, we're on all the social medias. Uh, probably the best place to get us on Facebook. Uh, just search for Wern and Blog. Uh, you can add us as a friend or just like the page to get updates on future episodes and past episodes. And- we do mean as a friend. Yeah, <laughs> and please don't forget to rate, review, subscribe on the on whatever um, podcast provider you're listening on. Yeah, because it really helps us to drive us up the rankings. And don't forget, if you're not already members of the UK Office Greatest Quotes group on Facebook, join up, get involved, get involved in the conversation, meet some absolutely nutty characters, <laughs> present company included. Oh, all men, all. <laughs> especially that one. Yeah, that especially one. this guy. Yeah. yeah, not the yeah. The last place you'd want someone like that is on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, all right. Um, look forward to next week's episode, and we'll see you then. Thanks again for listening. Cheers. Bye. Has anyone got the correct time? Boring, isn't it? Hands with all testicles. Not for me. I like it. Women are dirty, and I'm boring myself talking about it. <laughs>